Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and clinical professor and a CLL patient myself for two decades now. I am also the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. And I'm going to present some important research that's been recently published in relation to CLL. And this paper that I'm presenting now I've titled Activity and Exercise Likely to Improve Quality of Life in CLL. Let's look at what the bottom line is. People with CLL benefit from exercise, likely improving quality of life, yet they are rarely prescribed it and are less active than their peers. The bidirectional relationship between fatigue and physical activity complicates any analysis. Does the fatigue lead to decreased physical activity or does the decreased physical activity lead to more fatigue? Who performed the research and where was it published? Physical activity symptoms, quality of life and exercise program preferences in patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia was published in June 2025 in EJ Heme, which is the journal of the British Society of Hematology. The lead author was Ellie Miles, and she had the help of the CLL Support Association, a UK patient-led charity that supports patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia and small lymphocytic lymphoma, CLL and SLL. Let's go into the background. CLL is a lifelong condition which varies dramatically on its, in its impact on patients. Many experience symptoms in intermittent treatments that can negatively impact the quality of their life. Physical activities can help manage these symptoms, yet individuals with CLL often remain less active than their peers, even when compared to other cancer patients with solid tumors. Factors driving this inactivity are not well researched. This study examines how disease stage symptoms and quality of life relate to physical activity levels, and explores patients' preferences for exercise ta programs tailored to their specific needs. Let's look at the methods and study population. 128 patients with confirmed CLL or SLL completed the online 183-part questionnaire distributed with the help of the CLL Support Association. There were 66 males and 62, 62 females. The median age was 67 with a, uh, uh, with a range of between 38 years old to 91 years old. Treatment naive patients made up 57% or 73 patients with the other 43 or 55 having received treatment. What were the results? Not surprisingly, those who had been treated for CLL, the 55, had a significantly worse quality of life and lower engagement and moderate to vigorous physical activity compared to those who were treatment naive. Like other studies, fatigue was by far the most frequent symptom occurring in more than three quarters of the patient. Insomnia was the second most common at 55% and both were associated with decreased physical activity. Only about one in four patients who surveyed met the recommended weekly guidelines for exercise, which to remind you are more than 150 minutes of moderate exercise or more than 75 minutes of vigorous exercise weekly. Despite about 70% self-reporting physical activity at moderate to hard intensities. Patients who were physically active reported significantly better global health. Active patients also had less fatigue, less pain, and fewer overall symptoms. Treatment naive patients completed about twice as many minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity weekly compared to treated patients, 30 minutes versus 15. Almost 
eight out of 10 patients expressed interest in an exercise program tailored to their CLL. Yet, 70% reported that they never received any physical activity guidance from their healthcare professionals. Preferred programs to deliver what they needed included local community clinics or virtual sessions, but they wanted them supervised by an exercise physiologist or physical therapist with a program that offered flexible timing, low cost, good parking and transport, and a social component, preferably exercising with other CLL patients. So let's look at what conclusions and possibly what recommendations we can make based on this research. While causality cannot be confirmed due to the study design, we cannot definitely say if it's the increased fatigue that leads to the decreased exercise or vice versa. The consistent association between higher physical activity and significantly better quality of life and less symptoms strongly suggests that increasing exercise may benefit individuals with CLL or SLL. These findings do highlight a need for CLL-specific exercise interventions in an effort to improve quality of life, but personal guidance is sadly lacking for most patients. We recommend that patients take the lead with their healthcare providers by one, starting conversations and asking for recommendations for exercise, two, requesting referral to a physical therapist or exercise uh, physiologist familiar with the special needs of CLL, SLL patients, and three, with the doctors okay, initiating appropriate physical activity as part of their supportive care, particularly interventions that are individually tailored, supervised as needed, and account for the fatigue, treatment status, and mobility situation for each patient. We, online, we give the this, this original source of the publication titled Physical Activity, Symptoms, Quality of Life, and Exercise Program Preferences in Patients with Chronic Lymphocytic Leukemia. There you'll find much more details and symptoms and the link with ex about the link of, with exercise and physical activities. Thanks very much for your attention.